We want to make sure that we add a compressor. This is after our auto filter. Um, and actually what I'm going to do here, uh, instead of just bringing out the sound, that what I want to do is um, I want to sidechain this uh, to my drum kit. So you're not really going to hear it in some of the short notes we're going to play, but you're going to hear it in the, the reverb because the reverb trails and the reverb will then um, kind of get the groove from our uh, drum kit. So we turn on our side chain here, our audio uh, from, we're gonna switch that from no input down to drum rack. Uh, we wanna set the attack to 6.5. So that's gonna let our sound um, the initial sound break through and it's really going to start to compress uh, the reverb trails. Our release, we're going to turn that, make it a little bit faster, set it to like 10. Uh, the ratio, I set to 4. Uh, the threshold, I dropped it to minus 15. I think we can type that. And the knee, I think I left that alone this time. So again, if we play it right now, you shouldn't hear anything. <laughs> Um, unless it's getting a signal from the drum rack. So if we mute the drum rack and we play the drum rack, switch back over to the lead, then you can hear it. You can hear it um, affecting um, or compressing the trail of the reverb, but the original sound is coming through, right? Another thing that we can do, um, we'll quickly play with, turn this go ahead and turn that uh, clip from the drum track or drum rack off. Make sure we're on our lead track. This is another th uh, thing you can automate in your track is the auto filter um, by dragging the low pass. So if we wanted to do a build up, I'm going to go ahead and um, press one of the keys on the keyboard, um, ASDF, etc. And then I'm going to drag this little yellow button here. And what this yellow, little, little yellow button does is it controls both the frequency as well as the cue of the particular fil um, filter, whether it's a low pass, high pass, etc. So I'll go ahead and press, um, I'm going to press D. <laughs> So obviously we can come up with some pretty cool effects by automating our filter as well as the drive and the saturator, um, etc. I'm going to press Command Z to set it back to our original setting. So now we've pretty much got our sound, our lead sound. Um, let's go ahead and press uh, one of the keys. Sounds pretty interesting. Um, so uh, to come up with the note values for this particular um, for the lead pattern, what I ended up doing was I came over here to one of our base um, loops and I pressed uh, Apple, whoops, Apple A or Control A on a PC to select all the notes and I pressed Command C or Control C um, on a, uh, I'm sorry, my brain is going in and out, I, I guess I'm hungry. Um, to copy all the notes in this particular pattern. Um, I then switched back and created a clip under the lead. I did so by double clicking. When I created that clip, I made sure that my, uh, uh, I'm sorry, my mouse was at bar one, beat one, and I pressed Apple or Command V or Control V on a PC. It put all of the notes exactly in the same place as they are on the bass track. So basically, I have the same clip um, that I have on the bass track. Alternatively, obviously, I could have came over here, clicked this, um, pressed Option, and dragged, and copied as well, right? So either way, if I switch back over here, you'll see that all of the notes here are on C sharp. Um, one of the things that I did is dragged all of these notes, oops, press uh, Apple Z to bring that back, press uh, Command A or Control A on a PC, and I drag these up an octave. 
the C sharp uh, C sharp three. Um, I then went ahead and went in and removed some notes. So I removed these two notes right here. Um, I also changed the grid settings. So right now the grid is currently set at um, 1 16th notes. So that means for every bar there's 16 notes. And I switched that over to uh, uh, 30 second notes. You can do that by right clicking and going to 132 or 1 over 32. I also set this to be a one bar uh, loop. So I changed the length from two to one. We can then obviously delete those notes over there. Another thing that I did was I deleted, um, let's see, I think I had this right here. And hmm, let me drag this out so I can see everything better. I had a note. Um, over here on one, two, two. Let's see, that would be here. And I had a note on one, two, three. And this note on one, two, three, I want it to be shorter. If you press Command four or Control four, you can release your quantization. I drag this to be about 75% of a 16th note value. I then dragged. Um, and when I did this, uh, I'm dragging notes around, but I didn't do that before. <laughs> um, so these notes were actually in values where the bass was um, lined up. This note was on 1.3. One, one uh, I also moved this up to uh, F. F is a um, harmonic of C sharp or a, uh, in a, in a C sharp major chord. So um, F will work uh, well. I also moved this puppy up to F. I then brought this note, um, it was on 132. I think it was somewhere here. One, three. Okay, I uh, press Command 4 to shorten the note here. I also shorten this note. And let me see. I think I shortened these from being 16th notes to basically a 32nd note and a half of a 32nd note. So this, uh, if I press Command 4 or Control 4 on a PC, these grid values, if I double click, are 32nd notes, right? I'm going to deselect or get rid of it by double clicking. This note value extends about 50% longer than a 32nd note. If it extended 100%, so to this line right here, then it would be a 16th note, as this C3, uh, C sharp 3 note is. I also took these two notes, this note and this note, and I lowered their velocity um, by about 50%. So here's the pattern that I came up with. Let's switch back and hear how it sounds. We'll solo this channel. I'll go ahead and stop it. That definitely sounds like what we were looking for. I'll go ahead and play the master um, clips on track uh, one on solo. And turn me back from off on the drum uh, track. One of the things that I want to do is obviously I want to control the level of this particular lead. And right now I'm, I'm mixing this uh, on computer speakers while I listen to myself in headphones, so I'm not hearing the levels uh, as I should be. But I think it was somewhere around here. Obviously in the mix down mastering phase of this particular tutorial, we're going to go over that kind of stuff. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, look forward to the next one. I've actually already started on it. We're going to be chopping up some loops, um, adding effects to those loops, making them ours. Uh, everybody uses, or, or, not everybody, but a lot of people are using loops in electronic music and you got to look for ways to stand out from the crowd. So. Um, you don't want to use the same stuff uh, producer A or producer B is using. Um, but if you take the same loop that they potentially use from the same sound library that they purchased, we can make it our own by adding effects, reverbs, delays, echoes, um, 
bit crunchers, etc. So look for that in the next lesson. Uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. Have a great day. Please subscribe up at the top left-hand corner of YouTube, and uh, comments are always appreciated. If you have any questions, please uh, post them in YouTube, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Let's <laughs> go.